Okay, so what we're going to get done here today is uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. Uh, starting to have some battery issues with this bike. I, I have not done what's called the wire mod, and I'm starting to think maybe that's it. So I've got to go in and check and see how much the the rectifier and everything's charging the battery at. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure that I'm not going to have to do the wire mod. And actually, I got on the internet and there isn't a uh, video on the wire mod that I found that was useful. So I might do a video on that. But I need to get the oil changed and then I've got a turn signal out. And I can't get a replacement bulb for these because the bulb that I pulled out of it, the previous owner had stuck these cheapo turn signals on here and I actually I'm a big fan of keeping stuff stock so I've got an extra set of stock ones that I'm probably going to put on here and then I really need to get to the the clutch uh, the clutch seal in the master cylinder down below that activates the clutch it's really starting to break down all the fluids getting dark on it it's just a common problem but what we'll do is we'll get into the oil change here and uh, yeah I'm warming the bike up I've got the new lift so hopefully we'll be able to not hurt my back on this new lift and see how it works but what we'll do is we'll just get this thing fired up And this is why I actually wanted the K&L lift because instead of having this great big hydraulic uh, pump, the K&L lift had a cord and everything was centralized underneath. But you know, I went with all what I could kind of afford because if I would have went with the K&L lift, it would have been almost double what I spent on this. And this was a good good lift for me to start out with. And maybe we'll get the K&L a few years later, or maybe they'll revamp this. But you know, this is just this is just amazing that I can sit and do this and not even have to worry about this. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the fairings off. And what we'll do, if you've taken this bike apart, you know your side fairings have to come off. So we'll go ahead and start with the side fairings, and then we're probably going to take the bottom belly pan off, just so I'll show you how that comes off. Um, this bike really doesn't need an oil change. It sat all winter. I changed the oil uh, a couple months before winter, but uh, I actually was running 20W50 synthetic oil in it and I'm going to go back to the 15W50. I did notice a difference when I switched over to the 20W50. It did on them real 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 hot days it did kind of help me a little bit on keeping my temperature down um, but you know this bike calls for 15W50 and AMS oil had come out last year with 15W50 that's a hell of an oil so we'll just run 15W50 but if anybody um, ever has a real hard time finding 15W50, uh, I ran Amsoil 20W50 for two years in this bike, uh, synthetic oil, not full synthetic. And uh, I've never had any clutch slipping issues. Now, I do know that there is some clutch slipping issues with the earlier models. I believe 98, 99, people have complained about full synthetic oil, but I've never had a problem with the Amsoil with the clutch slippage. So I think it's just a matter of what oil you're using. So. We'll go ahead and get these fairings off, and uh, I'm probably not getting to the turn signal and clutch master. We'll make another video on that. So, and you basically have one, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts here. These are Dzu style uh, fasteners, and some of them will have the O-ring on the back of it so they don't fall out. If your bike's used and you bought it off a few other owners, it probably they're probably going to fall out just like that. But this is just the extra mile that the Italians go compared to Japanese manufacturers to get these off real quick. Here's 
you're gonna have two uh, should be four millimeter Allen's up here one on each side of this belly pan we'll go ahead and take these off and if these bikes have been apart uh, more than once you're probably gonna have all kinds of different bolts and nuts in here Then you should just have one underneath the here, right above the kickstand. These magnetic cups, now these, these, uh, these bolts will actually be aluminum, but it's nice just to keep your bolts situated from side to side. That way when you go to put this together, it's just so much easier to put this back together. And we'll have to go to the to the other side. Just remember when this bottom fairing comes out, you'll have to move it underneath of the kickstand. And on this side you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six more D Zeus, same as the other side. I'm gonna end up having to move this lift around again because I'm not able, this side of the garage doesn't have that much room. And since this basically, this garage has become a motorcycle shop until I can figure out the housing situation, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the whole garage space up because I'm just gonna dedicate it to, to motorcycles. Basically. Then you'll just wanna take this panel off. Just like that. And on the back side here you'll have three pieces here. Now there will actually be an inside piece here on the exhaust. And don't forget to put this piece back in place because I've actually forgot about this piece and hung it on the exhaust and actually melted one. And uh, getting one from Aprilia, if you're lucky they're in stock. If not you're going to have to wait some time to get them. So where I'm located at we do not have an Aprilia. Uh, dealer anywhere near me. I have to order all my all my parts from te Texas. And when I when you order all your parts from Texas, you hate to have to order a eight dollar part that you desperately need and then pay twelve dollars to get it shipped. So kind of just want to be careful with some of this stuff when you take it apart, especially since these bikes are getting older. Uh, around this area, these bikes are not common at all. You can get these bikes, you know, with the, with the availability on the internet, you can get these bikes. You know, basically the majority of them come from California, New York City. Uh, you know, I've seen them come out of Georgia. Uh, New Jersey, there's a big Aprilia dealer, one of the biggest ones up there. Uh, basically in your heavy populated areas because the bikes they just don't have dealerships set up like Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki the Japanese dealers and here in Springfield we actually just lost our Ducati dealer so but I've been really veering away from Ducatis they're just so much of a hassle I mean they are the Ferrari of motorcycles and unfortunately I came to notice that my income they're nice and cool bikes to have, but with my income, I don't need to be riding the Ducati of motorcycles when I see these Italian Aprilias that are just as good and easier to work on than the Ducati. So we'll get this belly pan off of here. I actually did not replace this. You could see where I melted this last time, where it sat on the exhaust, the exhaust pipe.
Now there's a couple different ways to actually change this oil and you know first steps first is you always remove the oil fill cap so you get air into the system and then if some people do not drain this oil cooler um, which I actually do and I actually just run a stainless steel hose clamp on there instead of a band style clamp um, if you want to put a band style clamp you can they're kind of a one of them deals once you remove them you got to replace them so you really need the band style clamp tool but I've never had one leak with a with a uh, stainless steel band on there and then on this oil tank reserve the drain will be underneath it here and I think I took some pictures I'll go ahead and put it on there and there's actually a copper washer on there you really want to go ahead and replace that copper washer on there and then you'll you'll remove your oil filter neck so you'll drain the tank go ahead and drain the tank and then probably drain the oil cooler and then you know pull the oil filter and there's one more actually uh, Nut that you, you you actually do not have to remove this nut, um, but if you want to get all the oil out of there as much as you can, you'll want to remove that. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that, but you got to be careful putting that back in because you can actually crack that. And I have some pictures here where you can see where someone had over tightened it, and basically when you over tighten it, it, it can actually crack and leak. So if you don't have an Aprilia dealer like I told you on the other parts, uh, you know you may have to wait to get an eight dollar part in to do that but you don't necessarily have to do that and there also is a screen type system inside of the oil tank strainer that they want you to pull that off every two times that you change the oil and on this bike I bought this bike with 10 or 12,000 miles on it and I've never pulled it off and I've never had any problems I think it's a second precaution because the oil system will run through that oil filter first before it gets pumped back into this oil tank and then cycle back through the system so I've never pulled it off but you can pull it off if you want but there is also a band style clamp on there that will have to be put back on and that oil screen uh, that will come out of that oil tank is pretty long so you know to me I don't really know anybody that does that, so pulling that out is just kind of asking for more problems. So we're, we're just—I'm just going to totally avoid that because, like I said, I've never pulled it off. But we'll go ahead and get this drained out of here and uh, get some new fluid in here. What we'll do is we'll pull the the cap off here so we get air into the system. Just make sure your bike's warmed up when you do this because it'll allow this oil to come out of here easier. Try not to drop this where the oil's gonna go. Yeah, this oil didn't even need to be changed. And actually, I am mistaken. There is not a copper washer on that. I thought there was. On that KTM RC8 that I worked on, there actually was. This bike does not, which actually it's based off the same engine. It's hilarious. The Rotax engines, they're beast. So just let the oil drain out here. Don't, don't ever rush this. Okay, we're just going to replace the, the drain bolt here and actually I looked up in my book, my manual, there should be a crush washer. You should run a crush washer on back onto that, that bolt that we're going to put back in. This actually, this bolt has been replaced. This is a racing bolt because it's got a hole drilled in it, which is for tying these things up so when they come loose on the racetrack, if they come loose, they don't fly off. So this bolt's been replaced. So I don't want to misinform you, but you should put put a crush washer on there and replace that bolt after everything's drained out and when you're doing the oil change I just prefer to do this one step at a time and just put the new bolt in and then torque it back and I'll put the torque specs in the video I really don't do too much on the torque specs on this kind of stuff unless it's uh, something that major that has to be done on the engine so and just put that back on there 
and then we'll move to the next step of replacing the oil filter. Now when we go to replace the oil filter, I also am a stickler about replacing these O-ring gaskets that go on this oil filter. So, you, you know, do, do you really want to risk a, a oil, you know, an oil filter leak over a, a O-ring seal that costs a dollar? I, I, I don't have time to mess with that. So every time I change the oil, I replace that O-ring filter. You always should. People cut corners and they some, they don't want to replace it. They think, oh, it's never leaked before. Well, I'll tell you what, the first time it leaks and you put $50, $60 worth of oil in your bike, you're going to be upset. So um, what I usually do is I'll go in and loosen these bolts and let the excess drain out. Don't just completely remove this um, and let it drain as much fluid as possible out. Then take the cover off and we'll pull the oil filter out. And then I always use a oil pan and I always look how much oil comes out of the engine and then I replace as needed. So we'll go ahead and get this pulled out of here. But if you don't have your oil drain pan in the proper place, you can actually make quite a bit of a mess. And if you can, try to do this work in a garage and not outside on a sidewalk somewhere in the rocks. I'm not saying that that's bad, but go ahead and crack it open and let it drain out of there, just like that. And uh, it'll take a little bit, so this is why you really need to heat your oil up, and then we'll go ahead and pull that oil filter out. There's not a whole lot in there. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull this cover off. Try not, try not to drop the bolts into the drained oil. Done that a few times. Then I'll go ahead and show you. This is the, this is the O-ring on the cover here that we're going to replace. It's just not worth risking it. If you go to a motorcycle shop that isn't an Aprilia dealer, um, sometimes they'll have this O-ring and sometimes they won't. So you need to make sure that they have this O-ring before you go in there. Majority of people will not have that size of O-ring and they'll just tell you that they replaced it. But just let the oil drain out. Make a little bit of a mess. We'll just remove this oil filter. Now there's actually two types of oil filters, so you need to make sure that you know which ones that you have. Um, there's a style of oil filter that I believe is an inch longer, and you'll notice on your oil cover that your oil cover will actually protrude out farther. There's two type of filters from that. It was actually, I believe, an upgrade from Aprilia. So you need to make sure that you order the right oil filter when you do this, because if you get the one that's too long, it won't fit, and if you get one that's too short, it won't fit as well. So we'll just discard this other oil filter and let this drain out and then probably wipe this out and then hit that other plug. Now we'll go ahead and remove this other bolt, which is not actually necessary, but we'll go ahead and move, remove it anyway. And this is the one that you want to be real careful torquing back because it's actually a, uh, well, it's not tapered, but it's a cone style type of bolt. And if you crack this, like in that picture, I'll throw that picture back up. It will leak. And this one actually... Boy, I might end up needing to replace this. I'll show you here. Just let that oil drain out of there. And then clean all the metal off. Clean the metal off of the magnetic piece. Now you may not have this magnetic piece on your model, so it may just be a, just a nut without the magnetic piece on there.
Okay, so we've pretty much let all the oil drain out and we'll just reinstall this plug. You always want to just finger tight these. And then torque them down. And I will put the proper spec in there in the description below. And then we'll move to putting the oil filter back on. Now we'll just put this new O-ring seal onto this cover. And sometimes to get this on here, it'll feel like you've got to roll it down onto it. Try not to roll it because you'll actually like start twisting the O-ring. You just want to kind of get it over it and place it down. And then take your hand and kind of work it down the cover like so. If you've never done this before, just take your time. It's not real hard to do. It's just, you know, if you're weary, just pause the video and go back and watch the video. And actually, what I like to do when you go to install it, if it doesn't fit on there properly, is go ahead and put the oil filter onto the cover and then push it in that way. If you want to do it this way, go ahead and put it in the, in the oil filter cover and then just push it on. It's a couple different ways. People do these differently. Just go side to side on each of the each of the bolts because you're trying that you're going to try to get this as even as possible. And there's a little wire up there you want to watch, and then you'll just torque this down. And I will put the specs below. I've done that so many times I'm not even worried about the torque specs but make sure you don't crush this wire zoom in here if your wire is hanging there just kind of push this wire aside get that stuck in the cover <laughs> you'll have all kinds of problems now normally I would uh, drain this oil cooler but I'm not I'm not going to this time because the oil wasn't too bad and I pulled out about four quarts and the average oil filter oil tank and oil filter chain should be 4.121 quarts which is equivalent to about 3.9 liters so we'll go ahead and start filling this oil tank up and then if you want just go ahead and double check all your uh, your fittings and then uh, but there's your oil your oil cooler drain if you really want to get anal and drain it if you've never done that and then on this side here this is your oil screen plug here but you're gonna have to break this band and I have these bands, they're a pain in the butt. I'm going to have to mess with it when I pull, pull that fuel pump out of that other bike. But, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this lowered down a little bit and replace the oil and then start the bike up and make sure I got everything set okay. Okay, so I've got my 15W50 oil and we'll go ahead and start refilling this uh, engine up. And if you have ever ordered oil, um, Motul oil, if you have a Ducati, even Aprilia, uh, Triumph, BMW, 
There's just various models that run this 15W50. Give this Amsoil a shot. I'm telling you, once you once you use this and you feel the difference in the clutch feel and it starts cleaning your engine up compared to the other full synthetic oil, you'll be like, wow, I'm a total believer. I wouldn't sell this stuff if I didn't use it. So, uh, yeah, check the links below. And the, the easiest way to order Amsoil is basically online as a preferred customer. So read the stuff below if you're going to oil, and I guarantee you, that you'll feel a difference. Well, I shouldn't say that, so scratch that. I don't guarantee you, but you will feel a difference. I guarantee it. When you're changing oil, I've seen people just getting big rushes, and I, of course, I've always gotten big rushes before, too. Um, and then you end up spilling it, so just kind of take your time here. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the actual anal type of guy that uses nozzles and uh, these caps here to change my oil so I don't make a mess. You can use funnels, but if you order from Amsoil, these, these nozzles make a heck of a difference. And make sure you tighten those bolts up because if you didn't, I'll tell you what, you'll notice it starts to leak out of there. Another thing, if you're going to go ahead and order, uh, you know, I got to give a big shout out to AF1 Racing. That's where I order all my stuff from for these Aprilias. That I can just get online and order that stuff. And man, they're on top of it. They ship it out right away. And they have a very large inventory of stuff. Not everything comes in. I had to wait a little bit for my fuel pump gaskets. So if you have one of these bikes, keep, keep watching here because I've got an R model that I bought off a guy. And I'll throw some pictures up here that actually was stored in his garage and check this case out that he stored this R model in and around these parts the R model is like super rare I mean I, I could buy one of these and just have it shipped in but I didn't want to do that and I actually found one that was less than eh, 30 30 minutes away. Been sitting. It's got about 6,000 some miles on it. So, and please always, always get rid of your used oil properly. Can't stress that enough. These government nut jobs in America, they, are, they want all this climate change and all this bull crap and all that, and I don't believe in carbon tax and all that, but I'm not a big fan of recycling. But when it comes to oil and stuff, I am a big fan of taking it and getting it disposed of properly so it doesn't contaminate everything. So, just take your time filling this. And what I'm actually going to do is... What I usually do, instead of putting dumping four quarts into this bike, I'll put like three and a half quarts and then run the engine and let it cycle through. And if you're changing this oil on your kickstand, the bike will be tilted. So you have your measurement on this oil tank. What you want to do is get the bike vertical and sitting straight to check your oil because if it's on the kickstand, you won't get a proper readout of where it's supposed to be. And we're on court number three. It should start showing up on the line after the third court. Don't freak out if the line shoots up to your measurement because it's going to pull the oil into the engine. These Rotax engines are almost all designed the same from the Buells. Buells used them. My EBR 1190SX had them. The KTM RC8, the 1290, uh, well, the, I'm not sure what it is, the Super Duke. Those are all those type of engines. 
and it sh started showing up on the line and I'll grab the, the camera here and show you. Now this is your oil tank mark here and as you can see with three quarts in there of everything that we drained it started and it's a little over it's about half to where it should be but as soon as I run it it's going to suck that oil in there and then we'll be adding more oil so I'm going to go ahead and put another half quart in there and watch this this rise but you're going to be okay because it'll suck it back into the engine okay and another thing on these Amsoil uh, containers there's actually a measurement on the side of the container so you know how many ounces are going in and this lift is most definitely worth the money I would be crawling on the ground on my back I have a really bad back people don't realize how bad my back is and my knees and my legs I, I don't show it but every morning that I wake up I'm in a massive amount of pain and I have to actually stretch and it, it takes me a while to, to wake up I think that's a big part of why on the job that I do that I like to work I prefer to work nights over mornings because I'm able to get stuff done during the morning time and I'm not in that big rush if I woke up and just shot out of bed I mean I'd be in so much pain just from my body it's just unreal so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start this and let it pull the oil to the engine and then we'll put more oil in it now I'm gonna go ahead and start it and you'll watch it you'll watch it pull the oil down into the engine just keep an eye on the line because it's gonna pull it all down in there it's what it's supposed to do I usually run it for a couple minutes and let it get hot and then let it set. And now that the oil has been pulled in, we'll go ahead and put the rest of the oil in. You actually don't want to run it too much without having that extra quart of oil in it you just want to get it into the engine because it's got to fill up into the engine and fill the oil filter and it says it takes 4.121 quarts which is 3.9 liters I usually just run four quarts. A lot of people, they freak out. They think, oh my God, in between this measurement, it's so crucial, blah, blah, blah. And it is crucial because you don't want to go over the max, but this oil storage container, there's a little bit of leeway that it, it, it allows for oil. So what we'll do is we'll start it back up. And then I may have to put that extra point one two one quarts in there. So if you're going to do that, you might as well buy five quarts. Or, yeah, I'll tell you what, if you're going to buy Amsoil, it's cheaper by the case. And it's way cheaper if you sign up as a preferred customer. My dealer number is 554-1460. That really helps me out. And we'll get more bikes in here if I can start getting more customers. That's the main goal here. And I'm not talking about just cheap old bikes either. We'll get some high-end sport bikes in here. This is Harley Nation around here. They die. The Harley riders, when you ride these big V-twin sport bikes, every single one of them turns their head. It's hilarious. There you go. It's going to go ahead and level the oil off.
pretty much for the oil change. So um, if you have one of these bikes, don't be afraid to do it. You know what I mean? These bikes are not real technologically advanced compared to what's out there on the market today. And I'm kind of changing my format on my YouTube channel. So if this video helped you, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. If you subscribe, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to get more subscribers, but I do understand that this, this channel here is more of a like how to, and I'm working on older bikes, so I'm not getting a whole lot of subscribers, but my watch time's up. So, and I've changed my intro and my outro out a lot, quite a bit, but if, if you're watching this video, stay tuned and go through my playlist. I've built, well, there was one other, but this bike had got totally rebuilt two winters ago, and I'm getting ready to do another one, and I kind of, uh, you know, I'll put up another picture here of the, of the project bike that I'm probably gonna turn into a track bike. I'd really like to build a track bike here. So I've got some parts laying around here that are kind of rare, um, some high performance parts that I was going to kind of use on this other build, and I thought about putting them on the R model bike, but I, I really want to keep this R model bike um, stock. So, you know, stay tuned, the R model bike's coming in here, supposedly. It only needs a fuel pump, hopefully that's it. And we'll get that on the lift here, and uh, I'm not going to put these fairings back on in this video because I'll just bore you to death. So um, they're real simple put back on, just do reverse of what you did. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope this helped out. And definitely try the Amzoil products. I, the Amzoil has been running every fluid of this bike. And it's just top-notch stuff. I truly believe in it. It works. It's, it's, it's race fluid to an extent. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm out of here. Free catalog from Amzoil. Click links below.